Oh, I'm off. Just standing here like a Dilbert. Not sure what a Dilbert is. Well, I've had a nice day today. Uh, not an awful lot on the painting side. Really do like this wash. I think it's um, pretty, pretty good. Do I say so myself? Where's my squirty thing now? Okay, I was going to show you a bit of drawing, but I've soaked it full of water, so now I can't show you a bit of drawing because. Hey, who is that? Hello, Vicky. Rachel! in a bit. Should do a bit of this. Take it easy now. Get down here somewhere. Purely experimental, I have put um, some of the uh, cobalt violet hue on this to darken, darken, um, darken the colour down, and I do very much like the effect. I do, so I'll do a bit more of that. Not the first time I've done it, it's on a different picture, but I've not used it with light red. So when we uh, when the Tuesday morning class gets going again, if it ever does, I'll do a bit of that. Who else? Yep, Glenn. I'm going to let that soak in for even longer because I don't want it to dribble that far. Don't talk amongst yourselves. Um, what have I done this morning? Thirty minutes of yoga. I must look a right sight in my little shorts. Plus five, followed by a long nap, and then I went to St. Catherine's at um, Teversal. to visit my mother. She was uh, very prone to wandering off 
and getting lost. And it's uh, since she passed away, at least I know where she is. I was talking to Rachel earlier about her um, her driving. And if anybody on here uh, would like to share my mother's driving, uh, it was really something to behold. Evening. There's a little thing here that says bring them on camera. And I don't press it because every time I press anything on this um, phone, things go. And I don't really know what it means anyway. doing Um, there's movement outside. conversations that you don't expect you're going to have um i was um having a conversation with um, a friend of mine from back in the day john gregory no less and he just happens to say uh This is Rachel who's reminded me of this, by the way. He said it not that long ago. He said she was right fit, your mum. And I went, that's, that's just wrong. And he said, uh, well, I'm just saying it. She was right fit, your mum. We all fancied her. And... I'm lost for words as I am now. Right, I will be doing that up there. And these puppies are not known for their um, dark black stems, but I will work on it. Trust me. Very, very hot in this uh, in this room. Let's 
it's not going to come off. Never mind. Oops. Right. There's these little Bobby's helmets that um, come off as. Um, Just before they are in flower. Actually, they uh, what do they do? They do something. I should leave that like that. Let that soak in. See all that round there? Overworked. Um, so, ah, I'm okay. Yeah, that's fine. Pencil I actually need where I'll put it. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, it's there. It's not looking. Right. The reason why this is a pencil extender. Right. And the reason why. This is so precious is because I think this is the very last one and they stopped selling these years ago. Right, this is a way I build up some colour with little circular shapes. It's checked and you can't even see what I'm doing. Have another look. I appear to have frozen. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just looking there. I've got me um, my thing on a monitor in um, in front of me, and uh, and nothing happened for a bit. And it's because I was doing this little circular motions. Just want that to stand out. Um, I did have a, uh, there was a picture originally but that was discarded ages ago now what do they call it i can't believe they had a phrase in tattooing called going freehand uh which means not tracing off or anything everything i do is freehand but i'm not doing it on somebody's uh, skin I don't use black or white on painting well I don't use black on drawing but actually White is quite important when doing this. It's a big 
dollop of sweat just about to fall on the picture. And I will slowly do this. I will do this slowly like um, renovating a thing. I have another pencil called Grey Lavender and what I can do with that is use a different sort of technique this time, hatching. By the way that sound, I love that sound. And I am just going to pop that around. Now, I actually want to soften that crinkly edge there in a bit, so I'm going to go back to the yellow and the, the white. Once that yellow has disappeared, which it will be soon, I will get Go through all my pencils of which I have. The saddest collection for a grown man. I have several thousand of them. And I'll go through them all and try and find a deco yellow. I don't know. Um, This is material things, I'm not talking about the birth of your first child, but something that made you really, really juiced and excited. I don't know if you, I've never had a new car, I'm not really into cars, um, but I would imagine going to deliver your first car and you're the first one to drive it and whatever. I can remember how excited I was when they bought out a new range of colours for the Charisma pencils. And it came in a lovely presentation box that they sent me. And I was going to be, um, because I used to be sponsored by them, and... Um, Looking, looking at this virgin box of, of pencils, all beautifully lined, and the new colours. One of those new colours was uh, deco yellow, and um, our Jack. He was 26, was a toddler at the time, and every now and again I'd forget to shut the room where I worked in, and he'd scribble on my pictures. Back in the day, my pictures used to go for a lot of money. Hundreds, occasionally thousands. And he couldn't reach my... Uh, he couldn't reach my uh, um, drawing board because he was a toddler. And so he used... Uh, hang on, I'm still getting emotional about this. The little shit used my box, my presentation box of pencils to stand on so he could reach up. And finish off one of my pencils. Finish off one of my pictures. Thus. Breaking some of the colours. In this virgin box of pencils. 
and uh, scribbling all over this picture that I had spent hours and hours and hours on. And that wasn't the first time he did it. Has he ever apologised? I look forward to the day when he gets his own house and I get to get my own back. First thing I'll do is go into his garden and jump on all his flowers. I once had a he was older then, he was older then, he's, he's very into uh, technical things and he likes to take them apart and see how they work. And I was also sponsored by Rotring and they used to send me lots of stuff. I never really appreciated it at the time but I must have been there. Uh, considered really reasonably good for these people to keep sending me all this stuff oh, I love you yeah I love getting I've loved getting stuff yeah um, anyway where was I they sent me, do you know those fancy pencils you can get that have like six different leads in it? Yeah, and you can just press a button and each uh, lead pops up. They sent me one of those made from platinum. found it, took it to pieces, never worked again. It retailed for hundreds of pounds then, so God knows how much it would have been worth now. Has he ever apologised? I bring I bring it up every now and again because uh, I like I like to hang on to stuff. I like to hang on to resentment. But if anybody has experienced the joy. Of getting a brand new box of pencils. It's a lovely thing. Um, you don't um, use them for a while. You just open the box and they're all in perfect line. And you can just run your fingers along the brand new box of pencils for a few weeks you can take you can take one out occasionally as long as you put it back where it belongs yeah I will um, actually since I've not got a lot of painting to do, I shall give you a pencil sharpening demonstration. Okay. Make sure you can see this. Here we go. I don't use a pencil sharpener. Did you hear that? That's terrible. Many, many years ago. I 
I was at the Patchins Art Convention, called a festival now, and I was uh, in my own little world, sharpening a pencil. And I could feel I was being stared at. And so I looked up. And there were these people all gathered around me. Oh, shit. I must apologize for the language. Yeah, all these people gathered around me and, and I just looked up and one of them said under his breath the master and I wasn't drawing anything I was sharpening a pencil right and he said the master and I'm like what? he said oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We've come here specifically to see they were Americans right and they were in something called the colored pencil society and uh, this was before it's interweb I think it was the interweb but it was done on blogs and things like that and um, I am absolutely certain they did not come all the way from America to see me colouring. Because if anybody's watched me colouring, it's not the most exciting thing. But apparently, these bunch of... <sighs> I love trees. Don't get me wrong, I really like trees. And I probably could be considered a tree hugger myself. But they 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 look they look like there was something from um Lord of the Rings anyway. They've got long beards and, and, and even the women and whatever. And um <laughs> he called me the master. <laughs> oh dear me. I just found it a little bit. Silly, isn't he? Excuse my son's language in the next room. That will take some time to build all this up. A bit of squirtiness from the master. There was this um, This is also many years ago. When I gave a toss what people thought, I don't care anymore. But there was this religious sort of um, philosophy school in um, Oxfordshire. Um, can't remember what it's called. And um, someone. Um, invited me to do something I've never heard of before called Art in Action and uh, I said it was uh, 350 pounds to go and um, I looked it up and it was actually really quite good so I thought uh, I'll scrape the money together and go there and so when I happened to say Amongst the arty folk, I've been invited to go to Art in Action. 
Oh, I did it. Who's this? Hello, Anne. You're keen. Yeah, so um, I got invited to go to Art in Action. And, and I said, um, I just have to say, outside, like you do in the barbecues and whatever, because I used to camp there, get a bit of a break from the little ones. And uh, I said, Art in Action. And they went, what, Art in Action? They've contacted you. Yeah, shall I go? Oh, you got to go. I've never met anybody who's been invited. I've heard of somebody that's been invited, but I've never met one. And I said, what, what are you talking about? I said, oh, no, they don't. Uh, you can't apply to go. You have to be invited. And um, it's very rare. Actually, I went twice. It's probably creatively the most amazing experience I've ever had in my life. These people were very much into artists. And they put, um, so they treated you like um, gods when you got there. Because it, it, it was very, very cultish, to be honest with you. Um, but art was their, was their thing. And um, so I went there with me 350 quid. And when they came round for the money, they, uh, they said, oh, you're 350 quid. And um, I sort of, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, um, yeah. And, and I was just a little bit nervously went to get my money. And they went, I'm sorry, it is, I thought we agreed 350 quid. Is that not enough? And they gave me 350 quid. Which is unheard of. They paid me to go. To watch. So people could watch me. Colouring. How bizarre. When I announced to the, um, the family, I was about, uh, I was 26, and I told them, I'm going to pack up my job and become an artist. People, where I'm from. Do not pack up. And actually, it was first Illustrator. I did illustrating first. Without any uh, skills or education or whatever. I just decided I was going to be an illustrator. I went straight for it. Um, I wish I'd got that confidence now. Right, I know what um, the leaves look like. I 
on a poppy because I've seen them. Yeah, I've seen them and so I can work it out. Which you can all do. There's a bit in Private Ryan where um, the first Private Ryan says um, he can't picture his, uh, his family, his brothers, he can't picture them anymore. And uh, what is all it says? Uh, you need to um, you need to think of them in context. You think your family in context. The holiday you have, falling off a bike, that's something like that. If you want to draw an apple. You can't draw an apple, right, because it's a generic thing. There are lots and lots of different types of apples. Yeah, what you need to do is think of it in context. Um, so you can't draw an apple, but you can draw a Cox's Pippin. It's got quite a rough sort of velvety surface. It's um, around the stem and it goes in like a um, an inny belly button if you've got a little bit of weight on you. Yeah, and it's quite um, crushed velvet. Actually, it's not dissimilar to this colour here. Um, as it then comes out of the belly button, it then is going to go, it's going to drift from that, um, that colour into green, little specks of green. It's like a dirty green. And then it's going to keep going down. And there may be little specks of that um, crushed sort of brownie colour. There may be little specks of it. Uh, And then, in a few little areas, it may be just round round the the bottom. So you've got the belly button with the um, what do you call it coming out of it, the the branch bit, and then round the other thing, round the other side. It's not so um, not so prominent. Um, and on that side. You might have some sort of um, cherry-like colour, but not too much. And once you've done that, or you might have a couple of little leaves coming off it as well. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Anne. That is what the glow does. Is because of the slow building of um, building up of washers yeah of which is about five or six on it um where was i yeah sort of like a um and there may be a couple of um leaves little leaves coming from the uh, the cox's pippin and um 
after that, you should be able to draw a coccyx pippin straight out of your head. This needs a lot more pencil work. Always losing my pencils. Oh, there it is. Stop looking. This paper is still a little bit damp at the moment. Right. And to draw, you need some tooth on the paper. And if the paper is a little bit damp, not only do you lose your tooth, but when you start to draw on it, you flatten down what little bit of tooth you've got, so you can't really, you should really let it completely dry. So what I would do with this one is Rachel. Do you know, Rachel, that has got to be the obvious thing to do, hasn't it? Um, yeah, use use a Cox's Pippin to to do one, and um, and actually because they're quite, I think they're lovely things, right? Granny Smith as well, not a Granny Smith. Oh no, what's um, what do you call it? Famous for, um. Southwell Southall, as I know it. Oh, that is a Granny Smith. No, too shiny. It's a cooking apple. That I will correct. I've been playing around with um, drawing artichokes. In fact, I'll show you one. I moved it a second here. Where is it? It's here. Yeah, that's an artichoke, and they are really nice things to draw. I'll hold it further down. Yeah, um, I was doing that before lockdown, and um, then everything stopped. And I'm back again.
the outside. Just love that. I really do. One of the things that uh, is quite difficult to uh, achieve, to do, is, uh, especially if you're a busy person, is to Okay, <laughs> Bramley Apple is the thing I was trying to remember that was invented in Southwell If I was going to do a Bramley thing, I would do it on one of those trees that are hundreds of years old. Um, <laughs> but there are things that are used a lot in architecture and design and whatever, and that's not a Bramley apple. Yeah, that's an artichoke, right? Um, you see them on um, popped up a lot so you uh, then if you're into this kind of thing as I am you then sort of look at it it's good to call it a study but that's a bit grand for what we actually do it so you just look at it and um, work out what's the fascination there is another thing that is massive in art and they used to fetch thousands of thousands of pounds and used a lot in um, arabesque is a dance pose but it's also a style of art yeah, if you've ever seen um, French Moroccan or anything like that, it's in there a lot. Uh, you've been to a French Moroccan theme pub in um, the film Casablanca, there's a lot of it in there. And do you know those um, these buildings with those beautiful sort of um, arching shapes? That you go through and they use them as um, in windows as well use the shape in windows that is based on a tulip because they were very very considered extremely special things in uh, shall I call it the Middle East I think I shall um, so tulips Amsterdam, um, Holland, part of the um, Holy Roman Empire, a massive trading uh, trading nation, became very, very rich in its own right, and so would uh, bring these rare flowers into Europe. Along with um, exotic spices and whatever. And that's how Amsterdam became the place where tulips came from.
Um, one of the stories made up about how I met uh, her downstairs in Wolves. Me getting lost at a tulip convention. Walking down an Amsterdam street. Morning, Mish. And it was really hot, so all the windows were open. And uh, she was an exotic dancer at the time. And uh, she hit me with a ping pong ball. I find that hilarious. I've always found it hilarious. I've told it many times. Not as many times as we've met Idlewells bus station. And we would never have got together if it wasn't for being best mate. He yelled me chips. But I think the ping pong ball one is, is a bit deeper. You have to think about that. Afternoon, Mish. Um, she's got an incredibly pelvic, floor, incredible pelvic floor muscles. Uh, if it wasn't for the windows being shut. Um, and then being attached by an umbilical cord. He would have gone through the window. That will fade. One of the most amazing things um, I've ever seen. Um, she only pushed once and he came flying out. Came flying out. Um, he did. And. Um, it went as far as the umbilical cord would take and uh, I thought that was amazing and uh, but it just got better because uh, the midwife said oh I've seen this before just press her tummy which I did and he went reveling back up again <laughs> I'm going to stop. I am going to stop because I've been told to stop. Do you know, I, uh, my ladies, there's a lady called Julia, does my art class, and uh, she tells me to stop. And uh, <laughs> I thought, well, no, I'm doing this. There's no, I've got no editing. No one's editing me, editing what I'm saying. I can say what I like. And uh, <laughs> that turns out not to be true. Am I in trouble, Rachel? <laughs> Do 
Do you think she's downstairs listening to what I'm saying? Because she's definitely not. I'll tell you that. Right. I've got one little dry bit here. There was a sketch, um, the magnificent and wonderful Victoria Wood doing a, an aerobic sketch. And uh, she'd be uh, talking about um, stuff. And then she'd go straight into, and let's pick it up, girls, and start doing this malarkey. And, and I love the way she did that. So I want to achieve that in this particular thing. It's only gone. Started off with stop, and then three laughs, which then encouraged me to carry on. And now I'm down to one laugh. Right. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> right, I'm going to let these dry, do a bit more colouring in. I'm going to start a picture of a willow. And I'm going to try and be not so faffy. Because these are faffy. But I suppose they were doing three all at the same time. Right, these these wispy bits are not wispy enough. You are a lady, Rachel, who was brought up properly. And you should not get the ping pong ball reference. Right, I finished. Don't like that bit I've just done. Okay, which often happens. I'm going now. Five, four, three, two, one. Let me have a closer look. Let me go look at the bit I hate. And go around there. Okay, and I'm off. Toodle pip.